The term Americaner is an adaptation of the term Afrikaner, which refers to the Dutch, German, French, and British settlers that tamed the countryside and turned it into a bountiful, prosperous land in the south of Africa in the 1600s. Their cultural identity consists of homesteading, hard work, and the highs and lows they experienced as they survived and thrived through time. Long after they established themselves in their land, mass migration and foreign interests sought to replace them. Though they are few in number, they've never stopped fighting for the identity their ancestors forged in blood, sweat, and time. It doesn't require a college diploma to see the similarities between the story of the Afrikaners and the founding stock of America. Poor but hardy colonists divided by identity but united in desire strike out from Europe, subdue the land, and thrive. Because of a silly academic tradition of despising one's own identity, there's never been a specific term applied to this founding stock, nor to the migrants and pioneers that joined in later years. Maybe it was blind optimism, but our American ancestors believed that the experience of carving out a place and making it home would be a cultural kiln that burned away unhelpful ethnic dross to create an American identity. This might have been true once, but it is no longer. Heritage Americans of every stripe have been reduced to second-class citizens in their own homeland. They are mocked in entertainment, despised in media, and ignored in the cultural story. Their folkways and customs are denigrated, and their contributions to the well-being of the nation and world are being actively erased. The Americaners have a dynamic history of highs and lows, but the current fad of educators, journalists, and politicians is to spit on that history. In a relentless drive to forcibly establish some deranged vision of equity over all, the elites occupying the government and institutions have taken the holidays, victories, and tragedies that unite Americans and declared them racist, antiquated, or bland. They do this out of greed, stupidity, or jealousy, but the motivations don't really matter because the consequences are devastating and permanent. The time has come to identify ourselves to boldly yet humbly step forward and accept the identity forged by nature's God, time, and our ancestors. There's a rich diversity to heritage Americans that is ignored when it isn't being insulted or lied about. We come from all over the old world, and like the Afrikaners, we include people from widely scattered origins of various tone and tint. There is no magic dirt in North America, no mystical spell woven into the paper of the Constitution. You don't become an American by being born here or having some faceless bureaucrat check a box on a sheet of paperwork. The American identity is made up of different yet equally important parts, the land, the ancestry, and the will. In a better world, we could just say, we are Americans, and that would be that. But the imposter elite have taken that from us, turning the birthright our ancestors fought so hard for into a meaningless concept. No matter what they say, no matter what they try to do, this land will always be America, and it will always belong to Americaners. It is our home, the place we belong. We're not European, we're not colonists, we're not visitors or strangers. We live here, we love our home, and we stand ready to sacrifice for our nation and people. Though we are at a low point with bad leaders, cowardly elites, and far too many sick, addicted, frustrated, and unhealthy people with no shared vision or purpose, we have every reason to reject erasure and reclaim our nation. Anytime the opportunity for greatness comes along, a crowd of wise-ass do-nothings gather to mock anyone silly enough to look beyond the horizon and cling to the traditions and faith of their ancestors. Once it becomes clear that you aren't giving up, the jeering turns into threats and accusations. They demand that you stop striving, that you don't deserve to be better, that you must kneel down and shut up. If you stand firm, they will find men of sterner stuff than themselves to harm you and rob you and ruin your life. On that day, you will truly know how badly you are willing to fight for what's yours. It is will that underpins the identity of the Americaner. Culture, color, and creed are all a part of it, just like geography and family influence who you are as a person. It wasn't just European people that came to America and made it what it is. The whole of Europe is represented in the faces of Americaners, and you can't name a country that hasn't birthed people who came to America and left their old identities behind. But there's one thing that is true about every Americaner with no exception. They are America first, last, and only. It's currently popular to be a hyphenated American, 
African American, Asian American, Indian American, the list is endless. This is a trap laid out by academics, political animals, and the ubiquitous faceless bureaucrats that promise goodies and special treatment to anyone who does this, and they do indeed reward their victims. But social welfare checks and pretty lies will not be there for you when disaster strikes, when the power goes out and the bandits start prowling around your door. On that day, all you will have is what you hold and who you can trust. You can reduce it down to one statement. Americaners are unhyphenated Americans by choice. They may come from a family that's been here since the 1600s, or maybe they just got here when we lost in Afghanistan. They may have ancestors that fought in all of the wars, or maybe they have no ancestors on paper. What matters is that when they are asked, what kind of American are you? The answer is American, full stop. I am an Americaner. I love my country, its history, and its cultural identity. I know it isn't perfect, and I know it can be silly or simple or quaint at times. But I also know it's powerful, productive, and dangerous. I'm not embarrassed nor ashamed of the mistakes my ancestors made. Because in me, I carry the lessons of their faults, and I want to be better where I can, and far more often the case, I aspire to their level of strength and vision. And I know, beyond any doubt whatsoever, I am not alone.